I'm ready to now start my second colorway of my Dear Jane quilt. I've made one. You're probably thinking I'm insane to make another one, but I really want to make it in a different colorway. I've made one that was similar to this, more of a traditional colorway. These are the two books. This is the book that was originally published, so this is the first edition. And then later on, they came out with this second edition because they had to change publishers. So it doesn't really matter what book you're using. I also am using the English paper piecing kits. So all of these videos on this channel are going to be focused on using the English paper piecing method with the English paper piecing kits from paperpieces.com. So if there's all these different ways to make this quilt, but this is how I'm choosing to do this. Um, so then from a book standpoint, the original versus the second edition, there are some slight differences and we'll go through that. Uh, but for the most part, they're covered in the packs. There is a, on the website on paperpieces.com, there is a supplemental edition for the second edition book. What this does is it helps equate the blocks from the second edition to the English paper piecing kits. So print this out, keep it with your book so that as you go through this quilt and assembly and bag sorts and all that, you can make sure that you have this here for your use. So we will bring this up as we need it throughout the time. All right, so I got my book and I got my paper piecing packs. And some of these I have sorted. Let me put this over here. Some of these I have sorted into baggies. I have other bag sort videos. There's some tricks on some of these. So I have specific videos for each of the bag sorts. Most of these kits have two bags for all 13 blocks in them. So you've got six or seven blocks in a bag together without labels. So this helps get through it a little quicker and answers any confusion that there may be. So I've already sorted this into my blocks and labeled them and all that. So, and again, this is specific to this. We're gonna go over why that says blue. The other thing in here are these cornerstone and lattice bags. Each, there's one of these in each one of the kits from the, each pack. I'm gonna take all of these out and put them in one location because I want to make sure that I sit down and make these, baste them, and have them ready to go uh, when I'm done with my blocks. Because this is very tedious to do at the very end. So I will go through and lay out, I'll go have a day and lay out my background and put a bunch of all these out, cut them up, put them in a baggie, work on them as I go because it's really nice to have those be put on after each block is done. So I will do that as well. So next thing you need is a plan. What color do you want to do? So there is a coloring page available on the Facebook site. Um, I've colored mine clearly. And so this is what I'm going to do with mine. I've labeled them with, you know, there's six different colors plus my background. And I've numbered, or I've, I've counted how many blocks of each color. So I got 44 red, 44 orange, 45 yellow, 48 green, 52 blue, 48 purple. And then I've got solid triangles in addition to piece triangles. My solid triangles, I need eight of each color except for the blue, I'm going to need 16 of those. So that when I go to assemble my border, I can have those so that I can piece them together as I'm done. That's going to be down the road, but I want to make sure I do all this so that I can refer back to it later. So this is my colors. This is my background. It's a very nice black batik. I have 10 yards. Uh, the book says you need anywhere from seven to nine. I bought a whole bolt because it came in a 10 yard bolt. And this is, I'm, it's an anthology batik and there's plenty of awesome fabric out there. So use what you like best. So what I've done from here is I've taken this and I've put it on a piece of paper that says what color is what block. So that's why I have these 
like this is A11 and it says red because it's right here and I've already put a dot there because I've made sure that I label it. So then when I go to assemble it or baste it or prep my blocks, I know which ones have what color. So I don't know if I'm gonna have to, if I'm gonna go through these, pull all them out and, and put them with the fabric. I haven't really decided that yet, but this way I know which ones go with what. So then you have your focus fabrics. My focus fabrics are also anthology boutiques, and I have six colors. I have this lovely red and orange. Oops, let me move the books. Red, orange, yellow. I didn't want to get too complicated with shaded gradations, so I tried to keep it as simple as possible and still have a rainbow effect. So I've got green and this nice blue, bright blue, and a nice purple. So this is going to be, with my background fabric, this is going to be my quilt. Also, I'm gonna to try to make this a show quality quilt. So in order to do that, I'm gonna to have to make sure that I make my points as straight as possible and meet that perfectly as much as possible. And so because of that, with a black fabric, I need black thread, but the black thread will only go where the black touches the black. Again, this is all because I'm gonna be extremely picky. You don't have to do this, but this is my personal preference. Whenever there's black on black, I'm going to have black thread. Whenever there's black on a color, I've experimented in the past, and for my personal preference, I like to have the color of the fa focus fabric instead of black thread. It seems to bring it up just a little bit. So I went through and I picked some Aurifil 40 weight. I've got red, orange, yellow. Let's do it this way because it might be a little easier to see for you guys. Green, oh, my purple's gone, gone rogue. Here's my blue and here's my purple. So I've got one that matches each color so that when I have, and it's gonna be, I'm gonna be changing threads in the middle of seams. So this is not a simple thing, but I wanna make sure that I have as high quality product as I can, because like I said, I wanna to try to maybe put this in some shows. So I have to decide that now. So I've got all of my thread. I've also got, I've got quite a few of these. This is a, um, Coates and Clark paper piecing thread that was available at Joann's. I'm not sure if it still is. Um, it's, it's on a purple lavender spool. This is the 900 color black. And um, I have a lot of it because I do go through quite a bit, but I don't know how much I'm gonna need because I'm not using just black like I was using just neutral for my first quilt. I also have the Soline glue pen so that I can base my pieces a lot easier. And plenty of refills. This is one pack of many I have stashed away. So this does use a lot, lot of glue sticks. You can use the normal school glue, just be a little bit um, careful about how heavy you put it on, because I did have some problems taking some of the papers out when I tried that. So I've got my thread, I've got my pieces. I've got my fabric. And so then the next thing is going to be to start prepping my blocks. I have block prep videos available on my channel and some basic techniques. You can always get connect with me at Dear Jane Goes EPP on Facebook and through my channel. But let's get started. I'm going to move this over to the next video.